and cast yeah. Ryan Gosling in it. Let's go. <laughs> Yo, Damn, Ryan Gosling in the podcast that or Quinn? That'd be. Oh my God. No, you oh. know what's crazy? I was that ass like dreaming about that. Quinn said, "I swear to God, bro." Just the other day, I was. I was watching man clips of him on podcast. He does like really like small podcasts. Like I guess he just loves doing it, and talking about it. Yeah. He's probably a Quinn. German person. He was like on a small podcast, like not not nothing crazy. It was like some regular dude's podcast, mm. and he's oh. been on it like four times. Damn! So oh, you know it's the person, well, probably. Yeah, it's a chance, you know. What a woman! Yeah. I'm gonna yeah. start. I'm gonna start DMing him <laughs> if he has social media. I swear to God, I'm gonna start, <laughs> I'm gonna start DMing, DMing him these episodes, and let's see what happens. Yeah, you never know. That would be great. If you don't try, you will never <laughs> know. Michael, you too. Whatever you post us on Twitter or whatever, at Quentin. <laughs> at Quentin and Ryan Gosling. And let's, see how, let's see how far that goes. Because social media goes a long way. It goes a long way. We've seen people yeah. who have been doing stuff like that and actually get collabs with people. Yeah. So we're going to do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to DM this nigga. Just talking to <laughs> like I, I could just imagine just talking to him like his like um his way of like how he thinks about the movies and shit like that. It's just uh, and whole different. Whole it's crazy different. what he's, what he said about Jaws, and what he said you know about Top Gun too. Like yeah. I haven't heard too much stuff, but when he when he said it because I've seen Jaws plenty of times, and that first movie is truly amazing, especially being made <laughs> at that time. Like if you have seen that movie, like it looks, looks great for a nineteen, I think nineteen seventy eight film. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And what's crazy is like, say if he's on here, he's gonna have so much knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> and we're just gonna just sit here and just listen to him because <laughs> I I've seen him guess movies from the description of a VHS box. Yeah, I saw that, <laughs> bro. That shit is in fucking insane. Like he uh, it was on Jimmy Kimmel. And he's like, he was a, a comedic star from uh, CCTV. And he's like, hmm, John Candy? He's like, yeah, it is John Candy. And then uh, he's like, hmm, uh, the clown letterers. I was like, hey, yo, bro, <laughs> what the fuck? This guy, yeah, that is a true movie lover. Yeah. Oh, he goes see why, everything. That's why I love, I love all his movies. Yeah. Jackie Brown was all right, but <laughs> that's yeah, just poof. my... That's just no, let's not talk bad about the guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, got it. Just, but you know. hey, man, but I'm. You got to keep I'm that same energy. I, yeah. you know, I, mean, I have to treat you like a regular person. Exactly. You know, you've done great, great work, and I love your movies. Got to keep that same energy. Just, I know you <laughs> fuck up a little bit. A Bro, little be, bit. If, if say if he does come out here and I tell him Death Proof is whack, oh my god. <laughs> He's probably gonna kill me because he yeah. don't play by his movies. Yeah, he doesn't. All. But he'll probably like he uh, actually explain yeah, yeah. why. Because you can't just hate something to hate something. Right. You actually right, have right. to have yeah. a reason. I was gonna ask you guys this actually because I I watched like two Quentin movies this weekend and I watched like some videos about Quentin's movies. I want to ask you what is the one thing that um you think Quentin like, like does amazing? Like the one thing you remember from his movies, every single movie, what he does the most well. There's a lot of close ups, um, close ups. <clears throat> the 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 showing of how true yeah two characters are. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Real real conversation with all the little stupid shit they say, like when they show these are you know real people. They're not just characters. Not afraid to do it either. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he has he what what I like about him, the one thing that I like, he has balls. You know, like Ooh, he has does. a lot of balls. Like <clears throat> he's not afraid to go there, because you know, people in this generation will talk about things. Yeah. But but now you can't tell you. I can't tell you the truth, because now the truth hurts. Now, like it's personal. It's too personal. Now we know. Mm-hmm. We know. You don't have to tell us. <laughs> and he's and he's always done that in every movie he's done mm-hmm. that I've seen. Out of all the movies I've I've seen from him is like. Yeah, this is it's always great because you, you when you see his movies you're expecting what you're gonna see. Right. You yeah. Know? When I seen um um Once Upon a Time, like I know what I'm gonna expect. And yeah. it's crazy because he changed a little bit towards that movie just to make it more, you know, I'm pretty sure just to make it more entertaining. 
Mm-hmm. But like telling that story the way he told it. <laughs> a lot of people really hate that movie because it's like, yeah. you know, compared to his other things, this is his most regular ass movie. Yeah. Like it's just a it's just a story about Sharon Tate and you know he put his he put his own characters in that world to basically stop that. Mm-hmm. I I like that movie a lot because it's like yeah. it's just you know you just seeing the life of of a uh, of t- you know three characters pretty much mainly mm-hmm. two but more of a a stunt double because I know he has a, a good relationship with uh, Uma Thurman's stunt double what's her name Zo- is it Zoe I think her name is Zoe but I'm, I know he has so much respect for stunt doubles that's why he had the the scene with Bruce Lee because there's so many stories of Bruce Lee actually hitting stunt doubles yeah. and that's just that's just wrong. Like you shouldn't treat anybody else with, you know, lesser of what you are. Yeah. I know he had a, a, a close relationship with stun doubles. That's why he made Brad Pitt, like basically the main character of the movie to show you like the, you know, life of a fucking, you know, the real star, to be honest, but I like that movie. And then he added his, his Quentin shit at the end, <laughs> which is amazing, but yeah, a lot of people don't like that movie. I like it a lot. But it depends on what you like and what you see movies as. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. You know, once you see a movie, and especially when you know the director's like that, you know what they're trying to, like, you know, tell you. Mm-hmm. You know, you're expecting it. Somebody that doesn't know who Quentin's work is or doesn't know what the movie is, they just saw the trailer, oh, it looks good. You know, they're not seeing it the same way. Yeah. So it's like, you know, their opinions matters too. Because mm-hmm. you're trying to get everybody to enjoy the movie into you right. know at least come they come something comes out of them out of them yeah them, but um um you know it's been he's had very few in my opinion of his movies i loved pretty much a lot of a lot of his movies i, I think uh, glorious bastards i love in glorious bastards yeah, that movie was amazing I think the biggest compliment you can give a director and i can say this for quentin when you watch a quentin movie you know it's a Quentin movie. He just yeah, have yeah. this style. And I think he yeah. would love that compliment. That's the biggest comment you can give the director. Yeah. They want that to be their movie. Yep. Mm-hmm. And his that. dialogue, that's one of the best things about his movies. Dialogue. Yeah. Fucking dialogue. He makes sure he he makes sure it's like it's a perfect balance in his movies. You get dialogue, but you're getting so much more around it that's happening. Just like with just uh example with, with Pulp Fiction with, with Jules and all that. Mm-hmm. They're just having simple conversation. You know what, what they yeah. call it? cheeseburger and like <laughs> who gives a fuck? But like these conversations, like something you really have with somebody you know uh, that you work yeah. with. It makes and it more realer. Yes. And you connect so much more. Mm-hmm. It makes you want to be in that car it. talking about it with yes. the <laughs> Yes. But then, do you really want to know? Do you really want to be that guy with them? You get fucking shot out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> fucking crazy motherfuckers. Because that's the thing. Like, that's why, like, with certain movies, I have, like, a, uh, not hard critique, but, like, when, when people force characters on you, mm-hmm. it's just, like, it just doesn't feel realistic. And it's just, like, I don't care about these fucking characters. Yeah. And you didn't, didn't do a good job leading up to it or give us good convo to relate to it as mm-hmm. much like a fucking Thomas the Train. <laughs> I, I, I... That's why, you know, the guy that made Prey also made t- 10 Clo- Cloverfield Lane. If you've never seen that movie. Yo, we that, watching I, that after this. Yeah, that I gotta movie, watch it, bro. We watched that, that. Yo, it's crazy, because, like, Cloverfield... Eh, the first one, garbage. Fuck eh, you. you know, <laughs> I hated that camera thing. He, he, they fucked up with all that. All that they fucked up with that movie. But Cloverfield... I thought that movie was going to be ass. And the fact that they were in one setting... The whole movie and how it developed, you know, with all those characters. Ah, oh, it was just I heard nothing thing. but good things about it. But and then you fucking and then you fucking they leave the place. And Yo, like, ch- 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 yeah. ch- you oh, wallet, you wallet. I think, I think, I think. Please, please. That's, yeah, that's a, that's a great movie, great acting. Uh, I, I think, man. I think Goodman is in it. Oh. Yeah, John Goodman. Yeah, he's great. He's fucking amazing. Yeah, I, I, hey man. Coyote Ugly? Uh, Any fans? Coyote Ugly? No, okay. I, I, I've, I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. a great movie. Well, so yeah. those, but that, that actor that made those movies, like, literally, I think maybe Prey might be his, I probably seen other movies of his, 
I was doing a little research on him, but it was just Ten Cloverfield Lane was like the standout mm. out of that because that's an unexpected good movie. <laughs> But yeah, having like dialogue that keep you in with nothing happening. Reservoir Dogs, nothing fucking happening. Hey, for wait, most of the time they're just fucking talking. Yeah, the, yeah. the whole movie they're talking. Yeah. Besides that, yeah. it was mad interesting. Yeah, that's how good oh. the writing is, bro. It's insane. You're interested right. in the fucking dialogue, the conversation. Because once upon a time and Hey for Late are kind of the same movie in like two different, completely like. Places, Settings, yeah, like because it's usually it leads up to talking, you know, it's just yeah. talking and it leads up to what happens at the end, right? <laughs> of right, those right, movies. Right. I love them. Uh, Another thing uh, he does well is music cues. He knows how to do fucking oh, of music. Course. No, of it, course. I I haven't. Besides, um, who's the guy who did Pee Wee? Uh, Danny Elfman. Besides him. Quentin's like his his choice of of music in his movies, fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, this like they're so perfect. They're perfectly placed songs, oldie songs too that you know are just placed perfectly. The other guy he makes music, right? What? The guy who you just said? Uh, Danny Elfman. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he that, did. That he did. Is, he did Batman. He did Spider Man. He did amazing. all of that. <laughs> that guy yeah, is yeah, fucking yeah. great when, when it comes to score, but. Picking music for movies, Quinn got that shit. And they said bullet train. <laughs> I ain't talking about it. Bro, when, <laughs> when I was looking at the reviews and people were saying that, and I I, I literally look, like was looking, I was looking at back at the time, like, okay, it has some elements of it, but don't you compare <laughs> <laughs> to the garbage that was. And you, and you know what's crazy? People don't respect Quentin because of uh he, you know he takes things from other other movies and directors and then incorporates in his own yeah but <laughs> what the fuck is the music industry what's every movie every no, a, what's like, every type of entertainment yeah. any type anything that's need, what people do you need you need the culture to tell these stories and so this, why not bring some of it to right and this man literally tells you this is this type of movie. This is this, 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 boom, boom, boom. I got yeah. this, you know, this is, my influences come from Dirty Harry, uh, fucking, you know, all these old ass movies that I incorporate in my movies. That's what I want the feel to be like. And then he goes and puts his own, you know, twist on it. Yeah. What's wrong with that? Yeah. How many fucking people in, in rap and, and music sample? Um, all the time. I, I even just found a sample. Uh, by Lenny Williams, Cause I Love You, Slow Jams uh, by Kanye. Yeah. And that song is fucking amazing. But nobody's going to be like, oh, Kanye got to start, you know, listening to old music. And make No, nigga, no. This is, <laughs> happens all the what, time. That's what makes the- entertainment great because you feel the, the, the same emotion you had from back in the day or if you ever heard the song, like, oh, shit, I know that song. And mm-hmm. it's even a better song that, that just, you know, you made with it. And guess what? You create a connection there. You got to be inspired from something. Something. Like, it's crazy. Gets me fucking tight. Another thing I love too, like especially in um in Glorious Bastards, like you know he rewrites history pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> and, Completely rewrites. Yeah, 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 but like he never undermines it. Like he has <laughs> comedy, like this funny ass moments in Glorious Bastards, but he never undermines what's actually happening in the yep. story. Uh, and that yeah. I think that's just. Ooh, chef's motherfucking kiss, bro. <laughs> I love that. That's why I love Jojo Rabbit. There's comedy. Yeah, I was about to say that, but you still it doesn't undermine the serious moments at all. That's a dark comedy, actually. Mm-hmm. Well, fucking perfect, though. What best type of comedy? Yeah, that's that's fucking. Yeah, that movie right there. That that's a, that's actually a perfect example of you know, not over overshadowing the the meaning of what's going on. Mm-hmm. Fire, man. You think um, Inglourious Bastards is his best movie? No. Because I, I saw somebody talk about this. They were like, I think that line in the end is like a meta. Like, he's actually saying, this is my masterpiece. Remember when he's like carving the thing on his head? Yes. And yes, he said, yes, oh, yes. this might be my masterpiece. They say mm-hmm. that that's a, like a, you know. That's what he thinks is his best movie? Maybe. Hey, that's a, amazing. That's not your best movie? Then, god damn, bro. That's movie's amazing. So, yeah, it's a lot of tears. <sighs> so fucking good bro out there i'll tell you that the tension in the movie Ooh, that's in that era hmm. amazing 
tough. It's tough to say. Because his top five is fucking crazy. Yeah. And it w- without any order, without any order, your one is Pulp Fiction. Uh, yeah. One of the most influential is. movie of all time. Yeah. I'm going to just throw Kill Bill. I don't even have I, to throw any other ones in there. No, I got Just put Kill Bill as one. That's a one. That's, <laughs> that movie is one movie. So that's the middle. Then you have the so Hateful Eight in there. Let's just throw it in there. Ooh, you think, you <laughs> think uh, Django should be in there? I think it should Hell be Hell yeah. yeah. Django... I think you should put Reservoir Dogs in there because it's a one setting movie and the dialogue is. Oh, can we take out Hateful Eight for Inglorious Bastards? Sure. Yeah. Okay. But it doesn't matter what you do because yeah. they're all great. You they're can leave like, any of them. I mean, it, no, 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 but Inglorious Bastards is, is a way better movie. Yeah. And oh, Hateful yes. Eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because Hateful Eight is great. I love that movie. I've seen that movie twice already. I want to see it three times. I want to see the extended version. <laughs> so, um,. The the venture part of it, yeah, it makes it. I love, I love, I love, I love movies like that that I just tell them. a story and it's just like picked up, and, and like the, you introduce the characters little by little. Like I don't know, but the way he is, made Christoph Waltz the villain was like, like no other. You he wasn't he 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 didn't kill nobody until the end. Yeah, he didn't kill nobody. He had his you know soldiers do whatever, but he was so fucking scary. And he was so <laughs> smart. Oh my god, man! Great. Uh, but he won an Oscar for that and Django. Fucking Django amazing. Had, Django had to get one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah had to. that was just too many great performances in one movie. An- another thing I heard about Django and Chris Waltz that when he um killed Leo, like when he got to that point, he was just so disgusted about what was going on. Like he was, dis- he despised him. He didn't, he didn't like anything that was going on in that whole movie, bro. And he was so disgusted it, that he didn't care if he died after that. He just went to kill him. He didn't give a fuck. And Jago? Yeah. That he didn't care if he was dying. He knew that he was going to die. He didn't care. He just wanted to kill him. That's how you know a fucking story means something, man. Yeah. And that's one of... You know, that's why um, Will Smith didn't want to do it, right? Because oh, he, he killed um Candy. That's why he didn't want to do the movie. He okay. wanted to be the one to kill Candy or Leo. Oh, the fuck! That's uh, the only reason why he didn't do it. Oh, yeah, he missed out. <laughs> I ain't. I'm not gonna lie. Hot take. Now that I didn't even know Will Smith was supposed to be in the movie, I would have hated the movie if Will Smith. It would. Was it would taken Jamie. Yeah. Yes. yes. Ah yes. man, that would've been weird. That's why I was thinking. I can't like picture him in the role. Yeah. I can't take out Will Smith and Django. Like I'm always gonna but see Will Smith. Like, it's like, how is he gonna? Is he gonna act how Jamie was acting? Like right. that yeah. character, Will Smith, like, is I, I a powerhouse. Like, yeah. not not in a good way though. To be honest, he's more he's he's too much of a of a personality for that movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, a lot. Like, mm-hmm. you need somebody that was like you know calm, like you know like straight face, like actually like I'm gonna fuck you up type, yeah. like that type of face. So Jamie, I don't know. It's it's weird, you know. Mm-hmm. Like perfect. Kind of yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I'm just when I see Jane, um, Django, I see the character. If I, Will Smith was in it, I'm just gonna see Will Smith. To yeah, honest, I, can't, I can't. Yeah, I can't see him. You know, mm-hmm. I'm gonna that's see Jay. Like, his see movies. <laughs> <laughs> the movies he's in, like you know, that's the characters he has to portray. Is, is that personality? Is yeah. like yeah. Yeah. most of his movies. Yeah, that guy in that movie. In that movie, he kind of had to take a step back and let the world come together instead yeah. of you. Outshining the world type of thing, so yeah. I think that's one of his big regrets. That and Matrix, that dude fucked up, bro. He didn't. He had a shot for Matrix, and he said no. He said uh-huh. fucking no. Tough. That happened. <laughs> I've heard about that one too. That's tough. I think that, and then Matt Damon turning down Avatar. Ooh. Oh. Oh. So, we're talking about the one in 2009. Yeah, he turned down the main role in Avatar. Oh no! I think he said it that he still thinks about it today. That that shit is. Oh man! And does he say why he did that? I, I don't. I I think he just didn't like the script or whatever. I don't know. That's crazy. Damn. He would have been what? in the biggest movie ever. What? Like, you think he would have changed that role completely? That whole movie probably would have changed. Maybe. You think so? Nah, I don't know. 